Can you check if the body dial's good? Yeah. Yeah. We had no idea what was going to happen. It was really just like, let's pull random words out of a hat. Where it's just everyone having a creative think about what they can add and then adding that layer and then moving on and then someone else doing the next bit. It was a very organic, natural, free-flowing, creative experience which just went like that. You know, having, having been sort of good friends, I think, uh, it's just a very enjoyable process. Um, we recorded all in the same room over speakers, everyone just improvising for hours um, and nailing down on, on specific vibes and specific moments. I sort of feel like our overarching sound of each member may give us some kind of unity. Uh, we would like jam it out and we, I would kind of just mumble through melodies and some lyrics would come out. I'm pressing buttons, I guess, and uh, playing keyboards when other people are trying to concentrate. I would go away and refine the lyrics and then come back and we would re-record them. The guys would make a little booth for me so that I could feel alone. And it's been very much like, oh, we got a little idea, put a little bit of something, do -do 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 -do, just like building up this sculpture. Yeah, we're all very creative, so it's been fun watching things come together. There's a lot of intricacies in the music, which is wonderful, and a lot of everyone's personal nuances. Yeah, the good thing was like when we'd finish recording everything live, we would go, or I would say, I'd say we, everyone except Rue, would go have food and chill out. And I'm not allowed uh, three meters away from a computer. We would come back, and the song would just sound ten times better. It's like wow, you have a song now find all the good bits, pop them together, all within the space it takes to make a dial. I make the best dial. <laughs> <laughs> Go vegan. One of the things we really want is for this music to be current. Like How Low, which has some drum programming in as well as, as, well as live drums. In fact, a few tracks have programming in as well. So for that, we've pulled in a lot of different elements from a lot of different kind of genres and workflows. I think that's why we have all enjoyed it and continued it to this point where I'm sitting in this chair. So on drums is uh, Nuno Brito from H2 Drop. Nuno is a very old friend who is a sort of percussionist as well as a kit player. Who's a phenomenal drummer who has a wonderful, solid sense of groove that has really laid the foundation for a lot of, for a lot of our writing and a lot of our performances. Uh, we've also um, had Dave Dyson play on the tracks. David Dyson? Should I yell? I'm yelling about drummers. And he has been extremely fantastic, groovy, and uh, an amazing creative force. The almost opposite ends of the spectrum, style-wise, to Nuno. So they really complement each other, where, where Nuno's holding down the bass groove and David's just going nuts on top in a very creative way. Moonlight is my favorite track because it captures how I was feeling on one particular day really, really well. We were going through, I don't know how many different chords in a sequence. And in the final section, I just hold down the F sharp and it just worked. The other songs are like explorations on a subject, whereas Moonlight is like, this is how I was feeling about this one thing. And um, I feel like I nailed it. Well, George, he's not even in the room right now because he's just jazzing next door, so. George likes jazz the most. George and jazz, it's spelt basically the same. G-A-Z. Who likes jazz the most? <laughs> uh, me. I met Leon at a festival called Small World, where I also met Rue and George. J jamming, I think, jamming. Small World was this kind of little orgy of um, of creative musicians and we happened to kind of be among that and collide in various ways. And uh, we were high as fuck. George played with Naomi uh, on a few projects and then Leon got involved because, uh, I don't know. And there was no bass player. 
It's classic. Leon is the best bass player I've ever played with. He's he's a movie groover. I'm actually not that good at bass. Who should we get to replace you? Who play? is she? Anyone, literally anyone. Yeah, um, <laughs> Skrillex. <laughs> he's a big influence <laughs> on me. <laughs> Skrillex, if you're out there. <laughs> Hot Wine was a really fun one to write. It was, a, it was a bloody challenge for Nigel. We were writing the song and then a whole bunch of people showed up for like a party or something at George's place. We were just feeling really silly that day. There were, there, I think there was like 10 people or something in the control room while Naomi was writing and recording the, the main vocal line for the song. And we just kept going because we were there to do it, I guess. So when we just threw out the idea to write about this bottle of hot red wine that Rude had in his um, van that, I don't know, it unlocked something in my brain that was like, it's all silly, isn't it, and we're all gonna die. <laughs> it was quite an amazing moment watching just nine people be sat totally silent as Naomi's in this deep, kind of intense, like, creative headspace. Okay. It culminated in this, like, just this fantastic moment of me just, like, passing out on the floor, you know, and it was just... Yeah, it was just, I don't know, I just, that's, that's what happened. It was really born out of just kind of eight bars of jamming and then from there we just kind of expanded, sometimes logically, sometimes very illogically. And actually Nuno's drums from that ended up on, on the final track with all the spill from us improvising with guide tracks, but you can't really hear it. And uh, I feel like I learnt so much in that. It was amazing. The f*** you laughing at? <laughs> Memes! Should I have a f***ing heartfelt moment? You're laughing at memes!